News Talk 820 WBAP and now on FM at 93.3. Make it a preset, y'all. 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288-9227. Chime in right now. Lines wide open. Look at this. Nothing. Look, the story's on Uvalde. The reports on Uvalde are all important. But this one is the one... Well, the first one that came out was massive, right? We talked about that a long time, uh, for a long time. But this one is the third after, you know, after the report, after action report, I guess, or whatever they call it. They have a report where they investigate. To this brand new one that just came out today is of uh, from the federal government, from Department of Homeland Security, I believe. Uh, and they investigated the Border Patrol's response. Remember Bortec, that elite commando unit, uh, was the ones that went in there and killed the terrorist. But he was allowed to live, and he was allowed to stay in that uh, classroom, murdering people, little by little, after he did the first several, for 73 minutes. Uh, one hour and 17 minutes. I'm sorry, one hour and 17 minutes. Do you understand that? They let a terrorist murderer of children and teachers stay in that room and continue to kill children and teachers. The satanic, wicked, devil uh, soul, if you will, to be in that classroom with those kids alive and the teacher alive for an hour and 17 minutes as most of them lay dead with blood everywhere. And Bortex saved them. Now, the reports that have come out since the... Uh, since the... Uh, horrifying event where there was a law enforcement catastrophic failure it really was simple it was a a, a one or two it was really the chief of police for Uvalde who pretended like he was a cop and a hero who was a coward he was a coward since a young age but he loved getting his butt kissed and and people treat him like he's a hero but if the time ever came to be challenged with a serious threat, he's a coward. And he knew that. But he's that was tiny inside. What was huge inside was his pride and his arrogance and his ego and his bravado for being a chief of police and being a law enforcement officer. I bet you he loved getting free stuff if he could. I bet you he looked for that. Looked for people to kiss his butt and get awards. He was the one who was the commander on the scene, even though he lies to this day and said he wasn't. Because you know who he was? He was the chief of Uvalde ISD police. He was literally the chief of the police for the school district. It was his job. Months before the shooting took place, he was out of state at a training, a national training program for for school shootings. He developed a plan. It was him. He's the architect and the head of it. And he was one of the first responders, and he hid outside of the door and told everybody to go, and he was paralyzed with cowardice and fear because that's who he is. He's a cowardly lion. He's the cowardly lion in the Wizard of Oz. He deserves to be prosecuted. He has been, and he's awaiting justice. He's uh, pleaded guilty. A couple other local officers, the chief of the police, I believe, uh, for the city, has also been prosecuted. But... Make no mistake, it is the chief, Arredondo, the former chief, the disgraced former chief, who is rightfully being prosecuted. He should never be a peace officer in any state, anywhere. He shouldn't be a peace officer for a, a, a people, a town of five people in the middle of nowhere in East or West Texas or uh, anywhere. I wouldn't hire him to be a chief of police for uh, uh, a goat path in uh, Mexico, uh, you know, uh, in a dirt herding village. I wouldn't. Uh, here it is, though. I'll ask you the first question. Well, actually, let me just give you this. The As far as uh, Border Patrol, this investigation was just released from the federal government, and they said the Border Patrol failed to establish command and had inadequate training to confront it. Uh, agents did not violate rules. No disciplinary action recommended. Okay, so basically, you were uh, you handled it incorrectly, but you didn't break any rules or, or anything with uh, Border Patrol policies, and you didn't break any laws. So that's it. Guess what? I have no problem with it. Do you? Because the investigation for state police uh, and the local police was has been done. I will share you the tiny, quick synopsis of that in a minute. Um, 
But the fault is is already who it is where I shared with. It's the local chief of police for the district. Uh, The city police are fault secondarily, but it's that chief of police for the district, Arredondo. Now, um, it was uh, the board patrol showed up, but it was uh, finally at uh, 1250 after seven, one hour and 17 minutes when Bortek went in there. Um, So here we go. Questions. Are you okay with this report saying no no Border Patrol broke any rules or laws and will not be disciplined or prosecuted? Are you okay with that? Are you okay with this report saying they failed to establish command and had inadequate training to confront it, but they didn't violate the rules, no disciplinary action recommended, no, uh, no prosecution? Are you okay with this report saying that, that no Border Patrol broke rules or laws and will not be disciplined? Or prosecuted, and wh- who do you fault for this horrifying attack being allowed to go on for uh, one hour and seventeen minutes? Eight hundred two eight eight WBAP is our number. Lines wide open. Chime in right now. We can pop you on. We got three four minutes before uh, the end of this segment, so chime in right now. We will get you on eight hundred two eight eight WBAP. That's eight hundred two eight eight nine two two seven. Um, this is uh, this is what I want to share with you. Uh, last week, Chief Arredondo, the disgraced former Chief Arredondo and the, the now uh, uh, alleged criminal Chief Arredondo, asked a judge to throw out the indictment against him that did he did get an indi- indictment from a grand jury. Uh, he's asked the chief, the uh, judge to throw it out last week. He said he should not have been considered the an incident commander and has been, esca- been scapegoated to shouldering the blame for law enforcement failures that day. This guy is a liar and a coward and is the one person that must go to jail for his actions. And by being convicted and go to jail, he must lose his peace officer license. And uh, I would like to see him spend some jail time, even if it's only a couple months. Uh, I would like to see him in jail, convicted, and for that law license or the uh, peace officer license to go. How about you? Are you okay with this report that says Border Patrol uh, didn't break the law and won't be disciplined? And who do you fault for this horrifying attack being allowed to go on? 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. Let me share more details on this from uh, the Dallas Morning News coverage of this today and the Associated Press. I think it's AP uh, published in the Dallas Morning News. Border Patrol had failed to establish command and had inadequate training to confront it. Agents did not violate rules. No disciplinary action recommended. These are the highlights from this uh, three-page story. I got uh, just a little bit of highlights. Um, The failure of arriving arriving law enforcement personnel to establish identifiable incident management or command and control protocols led to a disorganized response to Rob Elementary School shooting. The report says no law enforcement official ever clearly established command at the school during the incident, leading to delays in action and potentially further loss of life. Um, As I said, uh, Border Patrol, according to the federal federal government uh, today, releasing this violated, didn't violate any rule, regulation or law. No CBP personnel were referred to for disciplinary action. Over 90 state police were involved at the scene, as well as local and school police. A report released by state lawmakers said uh, the shooting was found egregiously poor decision making by law enforcement. U.S. Justice Department's separate study report released earlier this year said there was no urgency in establishing a command center, creating confusion among police about who was in charge. The report highlighted problems in training, communication, leadership and technology that federal officials said contributed to the crisis lasting far longer than necessary. That's because the chief didn't establish a command post didn't take command and didn't establish a channel for everybody to be tuned into because there was people talking all over everything. While terrified students and teachers called 911 from inside classrooms, dozens of officials stood in the hallway trying hard to figure out uh, what to do. Desperate parents who had gathered outside the building pleaded with them to go in. There were 911 calls continuing throughout that hour and 17 minutes from students inside the classroom. One student who survived can be heard begging for help in a series of 911 calls from inside the classroom, whispering in on the phone that there were a lot of bodies and telling the operator, please, I don't want to die. My teacher is dead. Oh, my God. Uh, the gunman uh, entered at 1, 11.33 a.m. And finally, Bortek took him out at 12.50 
Two of the responding officers now face criminal charges. The former and disgraced and criminal, uh, criminally charged Uvalde School Police Chief Pete Arredondo and former school officer Adrian Gonzalez. Uh, well, that he's he's actually a, a cop underneath Arredondo's command anyway. So there you go. They both pleaded not guilty to the multiple charges of child endangerment and endangerment. A Texas state trooper in Uvalde who was suspended has been reinstated. I don't have a problem with that. You know why? Because, uh, as I said, whose, pro- whose fault it is and why. And um, the he and that first uh, police uh, school police officer under his command that arrived, you know what you do when you arrive, don't you? Do you know what a, co- a Columbine established after that, don't you? You immediately go in and charge at the terrorist, even if it's just you. Immediately. You do not hesitate. You don't do anything else. You go in there. And this... As these two SOBs, at least I'll say the chief of uh, police, I don't know, that, that SOB and that coward literally disobeyed training since Columbine and the training he t- was taught three months earlier. Uh, he's a he's a coward and a jailbird as far as I'm concerned. And any day he spends out of jail is a bad day for me and these children and their families. 800-288-WBAP. Uh, next on the Chris Crock Show on WBAP at 17 after the hour. Dallas City Council just approved reducing speed, the speed limit on a busy stretch of 75, U.S. 75, as I call it, or Central Expressway. It's like the last six to eight exits or something of that nature on 75 into downtown. Major problem with that is what I have. But we'll talk about that with you. Do you support lowering the speed limit to to 65 miles an hour near downtown Dallas? How bad has speeding gotten here all over the Metroplex and uh, and there? And what other bad driving habits do you see out there? 800-288-WBAP. That's next. 75, a.k.a. Central Expressway, uh, it will be lowered uh, to 65 by 5 miles an hour from 70 to 65 on 75 from Mockingbird Lane. That is way up there, y'all. That's by SMU and all the way into downtown. That is a lot. What exit is that? I'm going to guess 8, 7. It's between 8 and 6. Um, I'll, I'll Google it. You want you Google it for me? What exit number? Just Google what exit number is Mockingbird Lane on seventy five. It'll they'll say it. Heading southbound, right? He, you know, heading southbound. Okay. Uh, 800-288-WBAP is our number. Lines wide open. Chime in right now. My question for you is, do you support lowering the speed limit to 65 near downtown Dallas on 75, a.k.a. Central Expressway? Do you support lowering it from 70 to 65? How bad... Uh, has speeding gotten there? And how bad has it gotten all over the Metroplex? And what other bad driving habits are you seeing out there? 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288-9227. I'm going to tell you something. I don't like this. I think 70 is absolutely fine. It is a cavern in that area. As you, you don't, I don't know what you call it other than that. I call it a cavern. You know, when 75 goes in, down into a cavern... And the um, the sides of of each lane, the outer sides of each lane, northbound and southbound, are like the the wall is like what uh, fifty feet high or seventy feet high, and then you get to um, above you above ground of the frontage road. I don't have a problem with it being seventy. I do have a problem with people going too fast. But I don't want to lower the limit. I think that should be... All you got to do is enforce it. Right? Dallas police don't have the, the capacity to because they don't have the personnel to. Although they could make it an issue. It was passed by the city council because the city council asked uh, Texas dot, text dot to, to conduct a speed study there. After news reports, listen to this. That, that bleepity bleep. And I want to say other things. I won't. Remember that um, criminal, Rasheed Rice, Kansas City Chiefs? Why is that bleepity bleep having any policy change on us? Do you think this guy should change our policies? I think this guy's a criminal, and I think he's an idiot. And I think he's a felon as far as I'm concerned, based based on what he did. I believe this was his second time arrested or being involved with the law. 
Um, as I recall, I could be wrong on that, but I recall that this is not his first rodeo with with cops. And he's got a problem, and it ain't mine. Except for the people he hit. It is ours, uh, the people there. But that guy should not change our policy. Do you think he should? No way in heck is what I say. No, it shouldn't be lowered. How about you enforce the law? How about you do that? No, I don't like it. I'm going to do an admission here, too. I go too fast on 75. I'm sure you're shocked. All right, producer Garrett, be, be honest with me. How fast do you go on 75 when you're speeding? You don't go more than 80? Come on, dude. Don't lie to me. You don't look down sometimes and see 85 or... Okay, well, that's you have an older car. That's why. Okay, what year is yours? 8, 08, and an 09. Okay, and they start to sway? What? The fast you... The most, the most you've ever gone is 90. Uh, he says it starts to sway. So if it didn't sway, if it felt just fine at 80, 90, or 100, like mine does, would you, yes, I do know how it feels at 100, uh, would you Would you go faster? I mean, I know it's hard to tell, but, you know, you look up and you're like, oh, okay, you look down and you're like, oh, I'm going a little faster. here. I catch myself going well over 80, I'll tell you that. And I don't, I I literally, what's amazing is when I read this story, that same morning, this is yesterday, the same morning, I woke up yesterday morning, I think it was, and I had uh, a dream or a thought in my head, not a dream, but a thought, and I was like, you know what, dude, I think it was that half awake thing when you're, before you officially awake and you're kind of barely, you're kind of barely conscious, you don't, you're still sleeping, but you're not. I had a thought in my head that came in and said, dude, you're going too fast. Like, you really, like, this is ridiculous. So, and I agree that I do that. Okay, on 75 particularly, and on the uh, tollways, et cetera. So, um, and other roads, D- just on the major highways when, when it's not stupid and dangerous, but I, st- I still do it, and I'm like, that's not cool. But changing it to 65, I mean, I'll still go 10 to 15 over at least. I'm not going to lie. And um, I mean, maybe it's good because it'll keep me at 15 over, which would be what? 85 or 75, 80. Hmm. So, uh, what do you think? 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. Do you support it going uh, from 70 to 65 on 75 uh, on those last six to eight exits downtown? What, what exit is it? Did you look it up and find out? No. No. He's bad at geography. Okay, I'll look it up just to see. Uh, lines right open, 800-288-9227. Hey, coming up next, pro-Israeli, uh, pro-Israel demonstrator in Massachusetts. Uh, Pro-Israeli de- uh, Israel de- demonstrator uh, was charged after he shot a, a, a pal- pro-Palestinian attacker that attacked him. He shot him in the chest uh, and the stomach. I will tell you about this and whether I agree if it was a clean shoot or not. You're going to hear the audio, too. That's stuck up, coming up next at 33 after the hour on News Talk 820 WBAP and now on FM at 93.3. This story is huge to me, and I want to play it for you because it has many different flashpoints. Number one, you have a pro-Israel demonstrator. It's interesting little sidebar. He's not Jewish. He uh, is a 47-year-old man from Framingham, Massachusetts. That's suburban Massachusetts. He uh, goes to pro-Israeli protests all over the area. He was in a heavily Jewish suburb called Newton, Massachusetts. I've heard of that one over the years. In Middlesex County, it's part of Metro uh, Boston from everything I understand. I could be off on that. But he was protesting along with some others uh, for Israel. And some pro-Palestinian guy, I consider him a Jew hater because he didn't just yell at this guy from across the street. The, when the guy, you know, uh, said stuff back to him, it wasn't vile stuff or, you know, incendiary. Even it was, this pro-Palestinian guy then, who looks younger and stronger than him and more, more uh, you know, strong and young uh, and uh, better adapt, from across the street then decided to immediately charge this guy through traffic. He ran around traffic and charged him like a bull and tackled him immediately. He didn't wait. He ran and tackled him. And at that point, the man was on his gr- on the ground. And at the same time, as he knocked him down, he put his hands on the man's neck. The man was lawfully carrying a firearm. 
He pulled it out and shot the, this uh, this attacker in the stomach one time, and then threw the gun behind him. There was people around him that were trying to stop him too, but they were like older people. They there was nobody that came in and just dragged and throw him off from some that's some bodybuilder. And one of the things I learned as a and I know our laws are not their laws, but I'm going to just base it on our laws because I know I'm I have been taught from many experts, many different things about the uh, law from uh, from Texas attorneys who handle uh, gun laws and have been on my show like 20 times answering every question I ever had and your questions too for years. Uh, it's it's It depends on what the jury says. And if it's reasonable and you're um, you have a reasonable threat to your uh, serious bodily harm or injury which i would say a man like a like a bull after you're protesting for israel this guy starts yelling at you from across the street you yell back at him and then he just runs like a bull and tackles you and puts his hands right on your neck on the ground as you're rolling around and, and this guy got the, he got the best of this this man the victim the victim's the guy that did that didn't get shot the victim's the man was tackled and put with the, uh, the terrorist guy or the the thug guy putting his hands on the guy's neck so that is an immediate grounds to shoot him that he pummeled him like a, you know, tackled him out of no, well, he tackled him down to the ground on a concrete and he put his hands on the guy's neck. That's, that's it. And to me, that's a lawful shoot. Okay. Um, I have no question. If I'm a grand jury uh, person and what the DA should do is no, is um, put in front of a grand jury so he can do it. Uh, he can wash his hands clean of it. Like uh, what's his name? Pi- a pilot. And and uh, pretend like, you know, I'm not going to take sides in this. I'm going to present the grand jury, let the community decide. That's really how you would do it. That way, because they're going to have to do that, even if you lawfully are, are doing it and the DA knows it, but they won't say it because they just want to be neutral and not get people attacking them. They're a politician. That's how you handle it. This uh, DA in Middlesex County, uh, Massachusetts, charged him. And it's unbelievable He's charged with assault and battery with a dangerous weapon and violation of constitutional right by causing injury. Here's the audio, and I've given you the details. I don't care that there was a couple other people around trying to get the guy off. They were older, they were not effective, and this guy was already had the guy has hands on his neck after tackling him to the ground on concrete. It's over. And the other guy is equal or stronger than him. So that's kind of the way that goes into this. If you have a tiny woman and then she's yelling at you or she grabs you and you're, you have a carry a farm, I wouldn't produce it. I would I would uh, tell her I have it and push her away. Uh, if she keeps going, I would say I would. Well, even I would probably tell her right away. If she starts going nuts on you. I would you, you immediately yell and you say you step back and you yell. I have a firearm. Back off. Go away. I have a firearm. Go away. I'm armed. Go away. You repeatedly say that, and then if she attacks you and you tussle, she better be your size or bigger, and she better be high or drunk or something, or you better be have two or three of them or two or three guys. If that happens, it's totally grounds. Even if they haven't attacked you, if you feel threatened and they're threatening you and coming at you, it's lawful to produce it. In Texas, it is lawful to produce your firearm to de escalate a situation even if nobody's touched you if they de-escalate the situation that is lawful if somebody's looking at breaking into a car and you produce your firearm and say back off and get out of here that's lawful if you shoot them for breaking into your car you're going to go to jail unless they're charging at you and they're a threat and they have a you know, bigger body or something of that nature if it's kind of equal and they haven't grabbed you and they're chasing you don't do it um you can yell it but don't do it maybe produce it but don't do it man it's all it's your apparel and I at your apparel and I would warn you. Don't go hunting for something to do. So that's my thought on this. This is not law uh, unlawful and the guy's a victim, not the the shooting person. The the, the shooting person's a victim. The uh charging and tackling guy uh deserved getting shot in the stomach and I I think it's a perfectly clean shoot. Here is the audio. All right. By the way, our number is 800-288-WBAP 800-288-9222. <laughs> Oh my god! Grab my pistol! Oh my god! 
That's redoing it, so it's just focusing on the audio of it, you know. So you heard it. You, did you notice where it was? The shot was in the, the. This is kind of replaying it slowly in those last critical five seconds, right up to the shot and in the shot and after the shot. Yo! Oh my God! Wait, hold on. I gotta go back on. Huh? Oh my God! Get off him! Let's go! Get off him! When he said get off him, he was talking to the t- the, uh, the 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 thug who was punched in the who was shot in the gut. He said, get off him, get off him. Not the not the good guy on the ground that was on he was still on top of him. That is clearly a clean shoot. This is what happens when you live in a liberal democrat community and you're lawfully possessing a firearm. This is vile repulsive, reprehensible, and this man who sh- shot this guy is a victim. The vic- the guy shot is not a victim. He's a thug who should be charged, and I'll bet you they didn't charge him. I'll bet you that. I'll give you more details next. My question is, was this a clean shoot? 800-288-WBAP. From everything I've told you, was this a clean shoot? It's on my Twitter feed if you want to watch it, at Chris Croc Show. That's at Chris Croc Show, C-H-R-I-S-K-R, Okay. C-H-R-I-S-K-R, okay. Lines wide open, chime in right now. We'll take your call, and I'll give you details on whether the uh, thug that was uh, shot has been charged, too. I'll bet she hasn't. Uh, I'll tell you about that in two minutes at 46 after the hour. And we'll play some more of that Taylor Swift parody song after about her endorsing Kamala. You're going to love it. That's coming up next as well on the Chris Croc Show on News Talk 820 WBAP, and now on FM at 93.3. News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Make it a preset, y'all. 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288-9227. Um, look at this uh, shooting of a Palestinian thug who charged and tackled and put his hands on the throat of a man who was a pro-Israeli supporter today, uh, yesterday or the day before in, uh, in uh, Massachusetts. Of course, they charged the the victim, the man who was charged, tackled, and the guy put his arms on uh, on his uh, his hands on his neck. Um, it's just sad. Quote: There was a small group of individuals, pro-Israeli demonstrators, who were demonstrating on one side of the street. There was an individual, apparently completely randomly, walking down the street on the other side of the street. Words were exchanged back and forth across the street. You are sick, the man said. You are sick twice. Uh, he was he had a purple shirt and he had a face mask around his neck. There's your there's your flag right there, massive red flag. He's a leftist Kamala voter. We are sick. A woman said, "There's pro Israel." Yes, you are def- defending genocide. He's on the other side of the street, in the middle of traffic, in the middle of the day. Then the man can be seen running across a busy pedestrian crossing through traffic and lunging at the victim. Ultimately, the individual became very rapidly across the street, tackled one of the demonstrators. There was a scuffle that was going on on the street. No, it wasn't a scuffle. He was attacked and, and, and was being uh, beaten on. Um, at some point, uh, the victim used a gun, fired a shot that struck him uh the the thug so far a gofundme page has uh raised over a hundred thousand i bet you it's at 150 now he's an iraq war veteran and he's not jewish but he just has been taking part in all the pro uh israel demonstrations which i love dearly i think that's awesome and um that's it no charges uh that i'm aware of stated in this whole fox news article for the thug never is not in the liberal town so defend yourself do what you got to do and um that is it. Would you search? Let's see. I'll search. Go fund me. He should have used uh, Give, Send, Go. If you ever have any tinkling of cons- or any inkling of conservatism and you're doing a fundraiser, do it on Give, Send, Go. 
they will never remove your thing as long as it's you know not some like thing that all of us would be like whoa you know like that's like not appropriate so GoFundMe is bad because the leftists always uh, they run it they own it and they shut it down if it's anything remotely uh, conservative that's my opinion and I've seen that over the years so give send go much better okay so um Let's uh, see here. Um, we'll do GoFundMe. Mm-hmm. Massachusetts. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, da, da, da. I don't know. Let's see. You'll have to look for it more. Anyways, um, I hope it's even more, a lot more than 100,000. Oftentimes it is. I'll tweet it out. If you want to follow me on Twitter, at Chris Crox, you'll see H R I S K R O K. So uh, that is that. Uh, what's her name? Um, Taylor Swift, as you know, endorsed uh, what's her name? Kamala in, right after the debate, or at the end of the debate. That was totally rigged. All of us think, many of us think, with Kamala campaign. Hey, she's going to endorse you. What's the best way to make it effective? They told her, and she did it. I strongly agree with that. Um, one furious Taylor Swift fan is now ditching her that she posted this today. This made the Daily Mail. Taylor Swift just endorsed Kamala Harris, and I'm done. I don't want to be a childless cat lady like her. If you really love the cats, you want to let the migrants eat them as pets. That's why I'm replacing all my stuff with end the wokeness stuff. She's putting it in a pile that's burning in the middle of the street. I think that's wonderful. I uh, am, am proud of her. I love that. And she, after that, she put a MAGA hat on at the end, too. So God bless that woman. Second of all, Elon Musk, I'm sure you saw this, but I just love this, gives offers to give Taylor Swift a baby so that she, after the, quote, childless star endorses Kamala Harris for president, and she, she held up a cat, say, you know, indicating she was a childless cat lady. So I love that. Um, Elon Musk will give her a baby. That's awesome. He's the best. Question on Musk has endorsed Trump. Meanwhile, that woman you thought was awesome in the, N- the WNBA, which barely exists in any universe of the average person, Caitlin Clark, she also is liking Taylor Swift's post endorsing Kamala. So she obviously also endorses Kamala. So I love then she's a leftist, and I love that the left is destroying her and crushing her, saying she's racist and being op- and they're oppressing her and destroying her. I love that she's being eaten known, eaten a lot, eaten by her own. I love I'm, now I'm going to regale every time she's attacked by uh, BLM Kamala voters. I think that's awesome. 